Hi folks, playing with, uh, well, fixing plumbing issues in the greenhouse, and uh, I use one of these float switches to prevent the pump from running dry, because the pump pulls water from this IBC tote, or cube, which is installed there. We refill it periodically from a frost prehydrant in the early season, it's currently March. I'll pan the camera outside. It's still pretty snowy. Dogs keep an eye on that. And uh, so there's a jet pump here in the greenhouse. The greenhouse is heated. The water has to stay in the greenhouse in the IBC tote. And it gets pulled out of the reservoir. And then up through the jet pump, filter, blah de blah de blah. But if people aren't paying attention and the tote runs dry, and then the pump runs dry, it kills the mechanical seal in the pump pretty fast. So the pump is slaved to a float, a float switch, so that once the float switch tips from vertical to dipping inside the tank, so it's suspended, and then that, that prevents the pump from running. And when this thing tips, you can maybe even hear it. So there's obviously something in there, and the old one died. So uh, it died in that water got in through the glue-filled collar, and uh, so it, it's not on a GFI, and therefore we could feel the ground fault through the water, and so I shut it off, and uh, I'm replacing it before starting the new season. But I was curious how they build these, so I took the liberty of cutting the lid off this with a hacksaw, and now I can show you the fiendishly clever and simple mechanism that makes that switch. And it is, so there's this kind of two uh, sort of hourglass shaped cavity, and in there there's definitely something rolling back and forth, and then the two contacts, and what it is, is a rubber grommet sits down at this end that just deadens the, the movement. It's a micro switch and a couple of levers that I'm pretty sure get arranged like this. And then when the ball falls past the midpoint, it collapses the levers. And this appears to just be a solid steel ball, it's relatively heavy. So with the two uh, levers in position, and I try to reinstall the micro switch. Micro switch sits on a pin here to locate it. And it's trickier with one hand. So then when the ball comes down, that's all there is to it. So that's now in the floating position, so that's contact closed and the pump can run, but if the reservoir runs dry and it falls past horizontal, open. And so these, depending on which kind of float switch you buy, it's either connected common and normally open or normally closed. Maybe I've got that backwards, but you can figure it out. So this one is a style of float switch where, uh, you know, it might be for a, a sump pump. It would be the same logic where when the float rises and the sump is starting to fill, click, the pump comes on and it runs and runs and runs and runs and runs until it drains the sump enough and then clack, it's off. And then it runs again. So in this case, I want it to shut off to protect the pump when the reservoir is running dry, but uh, it's the same general idea. So here's a new one, it's going to get tossed into the thing and it runs into one of these uh, clever little sort of piggyback plugs and it just makes or breaks the contact across the hot pin in the, the NEMA 5 plug and then that runs down and supplies the pump via the pressure switch and it's all good and that way no one can burn the pump out just through uh, 
lack of inattention. They have to do it. They have to find more creative ways to burn the pump out. <laughs>